Hello everyone, welcome to lecture seven. In the first part, we're going to talk about a few topics. The chain rule of the derivative, how to find the derivative of common functions, and the what is implicit differentiation. Let's dive in. So let's look at the what is a composite function. We already learned composite function in the first few lectures, uh, essentially consists of a series of transformations or functions. In this example, if we have x that goes through g as the first level transformation and then goes to f as the second level, that can express it as, so, they, they, so the total results will be what happens uh, in set m. And if I express uh, m as a function of x, then I can say now x goes to g first, so I have g, then the output of g of x goes to f as the input, right? So that's how we can write it. So that's uh, this, the, uh, the basic concept of a composite function. So let's just look at one example. Say I have uh, f of u, right? It's another input, another notation. Uh, just like f of x, uh, e to the power of u, and then g of uh, x, which is negative 3x. So if I want to calculate the first one, which is g of x, and then uh, go to f. So this one can be, we know this one we're go is going to be treated as an entity itself. So in this case, we're going to treat uh, negative 3x as the input to f, the function. Then we have e to the power of negative three X. So this is by treating this as entity as the input. Uh, next we have G of uh, F of X of U, right? The same thing, right? So what do we do about it? Then this time we treat uh, this as an entity itself. So what is this? This is E to the power of U. And what does she do? So G does nothing more than times uh, or multiply negative three. Right, so this is our answer. So essentially, we want to decompose a series of transformations. And uh, when they are composed together, we call it a composite function. Um, so that's the, uh, the about, uh, uh, review of composite function. Now, next, let's look at the chain rule of uh, taking uh, derivatives. So when we have a composite function, right? so this is first level function, this is second level function. And we want to take the derivative of m with respect to x, right? So this is how we can write it. Then the derivative is actually composed of two parts. The first part is the derivative of the outer function, e, right? Uh, taking the derivative of the outer function with respect to the, the inner function itself, which is i. So this first part. This is the second part, which is to take the derivative of the inner function itself. So this is the second part. And then these two results are multiplied together. Right, so if we change the notation, then we see if y equals to uh, the, the outer function and u is the inner function, then if we take the derivative of y with respect to x, then we have the first derivative of the outer function and the second derivative of the inner function. And these results are multiplied together. So this uh, was the, essentially what the chain rule is about. So now let's look at one example. Uh, just look at this example. So M is equal to this expression. So if we want to take the derivative of M with respect to X, Right, then what do we do about this? So we know that the outer function itself um, is actually, so if we treat u as an entity uh, of the three x squared plus one, right? So if we treat this as entity, then this is the first level transformation, right? So x goes to this level transformation, and then we have to the power of uh, three over two, right? So this is a second level transformation. So uh, if you want to take the derivative uh, of this one, then we can we need to actually go uh, work from the outer function first, then towards the innermost function. So in this case, we're going to start with this one first. This is our first derivative, and this should be our second derivative, right? So what's the first derivative? So the derivative of u to the power of three over two, 
right? We're taking this derivative, uh, then this would be three over two minus one. And then, sorry, so this, we're just moving three over two here, multiplied by u to the power of three over two minus one gives us three over two u to the power of one over two, All right? So this is our uh, first level derivative. And then we know that u is actually uh, a shorthand for this expression. So that means that our first derivative, first uh, part of the derivative should be three over two, write down this expression, and this should be one over two, just plug in, right? I'm plugging the expression for u. So that's the first level uh, expression and multiply by the second level. Second level, the inner function, which is uh, 3x squared plus one. Now I'm taking this derivative. So uh, by working this out, we, I know that uh, this is six uh, x, right? So we just times uh, six x, and we can further simplify the expression just by expanding it out. Okay, so that's uh, essentially what we need to take notice that when we have this composite function, something like this, we need to treat this as an entity, right? So first work on the outermost function and then uh, take the second level derivative, which is the inner function itself and then multiply the results together. All right, next we have the uh, more details on the chain rule itself. So if we look at the chain rule uh, and we have three levels of functions or even more. So for example, y equals to f of w, w equals to g of u, and then u equals to h of x, right? So different uh, layers. So if I draw a graph, x go to, uh, I guess I call it u, right? So u is to be the, uh, the first level function w will be the second level and then we have y so this is how we can calculate sequentially uh, the the outputs at each intermediate level right so now if we want to take the derivative of y with respect to x i need to move backwards step by step right? something like this so if uh, i have the first level so this is level one level two level three the outermost, which is level one, gives me the the first part, which is this one, right? And then the second level gives me this one, uh, the second derivative, and then the third derivative, uh, which is the third part. Now these uh, three derivatives are multiplied together. Okay, so let's look at one example. So suppose I have this expression uh, of y equals to a function of x. Now, what can we do? So now by using the, the rule of uh, working from the outside, for, then gradually towards the inner functions, I know that y, uh, the derivative of y, we can say to y respect to x be equal to, I know, uh, so treating this as an exponential function because I know a to the power of x, so this exponential function and the derivative is itself. So the first level, I just write it down. Uh, which is itself in terms of the derivative, right? So this is first level. Now, what is the second level? Second level is that I want to, so this is multiply. The second level is I want to uh, get the derivative of this expression. So I'm treating this as the second level uh, function. And I want to get a derivative, which turns out to be, uh, this is gonna be zero, it's gonna be, uh, if we work it out, yeah, work it out it's going to be 2 blowing x, right? So we just multiply by two, uh, by, by this. So this is our uh, second level. Yeah. We just multiply here, 2 blowing x. The third layer, which is this function itself, the innermost function. Now this derivative itself is 1 over x, so times 1 over x. Now we can uh, reshuffle a bit and then uh, express it's the, 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 the derivative output. So this is the results of taking the derivative of this composite function, right? Okay, now next, let's look at the general derivative rules. So uh, a few general derivative rules. First one is uh, this one. So if I have a function and raised to the power of n, then when I take the derivative, so I treat the the power function as entity first, so the outer layer, that gives me n times 
the uh, this one. So this is the first level uh, derivative. The second level, the inner function, I would uh, just express as the derivative of f with respect to x, then multiply the results together. So this is my results. Right, so so basically we just multiply the inner uh, derivative and then the outer derivative. Similarly, if I have a ln of f of x, then uh, this is my first level derivative and this is my second level derivative multiplied together. Similarly, if I take the derivative of e to the power of f, then e itself does not change in terms of a derivative and then the, the derivative of f with respect to x, then multiply together. Right, so uh, it's uh, so the process is procedural, right? So it's systematic. As long as we uh, know what is the level of transformation from start to at the end, and then work backwards. Okay, so let's just look at this example. So we have uh, here now it's a simple exercise. So uh, so these t t of x we can write it this way. Now treating the uh, the, ent the function itself as entity. Now this will become the first level. The outermost level would be e to the power of two times x. Then if we just write it in more detailed way, then I would, I would take the derivative uh, with respect to this one. So this is my uh, second layer function. Now I just multiply together, it gives me two right, times two. I can write it in this way. So this is the results by decomposing this series of transformations. All right. Um, so this slide contains a list of uh, formulas, the rules of taking derivatives. As we already know, uh, for example, if we look at the left half, if it's a constant, then the derivative is zero. Power function, this is the rule of taking the derivative uh, for the power function. The exponential function, the, uh, the general, uh, the general exponential function, where well, the basis b, right? We have this actual term here. Uh, the ln function, say the, the the one over x. And if I have the different base here, then I would multiply this one into the denominator, and then uh, add the the extra condition for b as well. So sine, cosine is the the the, the usual rules would uh, often work with. Now, so this is uh, the simplest, simplest function, right? If we add another layer of uh, f here, so we have x goes to f, then goes to, for example, the power function, then what happens is that we would have this extra term here because that is our first level of transformation. And then we should, we should multiply it uh, to the results of this, uh, of, uh, of the, the outermost uh, function's derivative. So we have here. And if we look downwards, so all the expressions are exactly the same, right? So uh, uh, the only difference is that we have one extra multiplier, which is uh, the, the f, uh, the, the derivative of f with respect to x, right? So here, let me just write it down, all right? So uh, uh, nothing, uh, 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 nothing unusual, it's just we have an extra uh, multiplier which is to take the derivative of the innermost function. Okay, so now with that in perspective, we have one extra tool, which we call explicit, uh, implicit differentiation. Now, ex implicit is, uh, with, is uh, uh, in, is re in regard to the uh, explicit. So what is explicit? Now, this is our usual form. We express y as a function of x, right? So uh, now we can take the derivative. Now we can just work from these parts. But if we express x and y in the so-called standard form, right? Recall that we have a different forms of a line equation. And this is uh, uh, similar to the standard form where we do not differentiate x and y. So in this way, we can still take the uh, we can still perform differentiation. And then when we do that, it's called implicit differentiation because we are differentiating every each and every components on the left and on the right side of the equation. So y, as we know, is a function of x, right? So we just assume it's just shorthand, where it says y. Okay, so why is that useful? Uh, let's look at uh, two examples. The first one is implicit 
um, differentiation, the second one is explicit. So if it's explicit, then if we take the derivative, it'd be very straightforward, right? We just take the derivative, this negative six x. So if we were to take the uh, approach of uh, implicit differentiation, then we can first write y as a function of x, right? And then take the derivative of both sides. So break it down individually, right? Because of linearity of uh, the differentiation operation, now can distribute the derivative operation to each component, right? Things like this. So we have here, 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 three components. Now what this gives us, six x, uh, the derivative of y, and zero because it's constant. Now we shuffle around, we have the expression, which is uh, exactly the same as a result of the explicit differentiation. So this approach would come handy uh, in, in some situations as we uh, talk about it later. Okay, so now uh, a simple exercise. Uh, let's go over this exercise just to familiar us. Uh, familiar, familiarize with the uh, uh, the approach of implicit differentiation. So now, assume we have this uh, circle here. Now, what is a circle? The circle is that uh, uh, the circle is can be represented uh, as an uh, expression like this. So uh, we know that all the points of x and y should satisfy this expression. And so this is our equation here. And uh, the problem is asking that, the question is asking that uh, we need to find the derivative of y and also evaluate. Okay, so the slope are these two points. So exactly these two points and the slope meaning the derivative or the gradient uh, are these two points, right? So that means that we first need to find the derivative of y first. So how do we go about this? We can use the, 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 uh, the approach of taking the implicit differentiation. So this is how we can do it. We have this expression. Now, let me write it in this way so that uh, it's uh, clear, right? In terms of uh, the steps. So now this is what we have. Y is a function of X. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So that means treating both sides as entity. Take the derivative with respect to X. Now this also, let me erase so this is also the derivative with respect to x zero, which gives me again zero. And then I break it down basically to take the derivative of individual components, right? So individual components. So the first one gives me two x plus the second one gives me two, right? Move down to multiply y of as a function of x and also uh, because it's a composite function, then we need to multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x as well, right? This third one is just nothing more than zero. So uh, I think this is the minus. So just minus zero equals to zero. Now continue. We have two x plus uh, using shorthand y and y uh, the derivative because zero. This gives me y. The derivative would be, so if we shuffle around, it'd be negative 2x over 2y, which is equal to x over y negative. Okay, so that is the expression. So that is the results of the derivative of y. Now I'm asking the, uh, what is the slope, right? What is derivative at uh, these points? So when x equals 3, now I have two points. Uh, obviously, this circuit itself, itself is not a function based on our definition, because when x is to three, I have two mappings. But if we restrict the uh, the the range to either the foot, the bottom or the top half, then uh, it's actually a function because there'll be, if it's a half circle, then it's, it'll be a function. But now if it's a full circle, it's not a function based on our definition. Uh, that's just a side note. So uh, I want to evaluate what is y when x uh, equals to three? So when x equals three, now I have two points, right? This is first point, this is second point. So two points. Now, uh, that means that my derivative or my slope is also should be two slopes, right? So the first point, uh, the first one. So it's the first point so it would be uh, negative three over four. That's the first point. 
the second point that would be negative 3 over negative 4 which is 3 over 4 which corresponds to uh, graphically uh, the, the two lines this is the first line this is second line right so first this, this is a slope now this slope equals to negative 3 over 4 so that also shows that it's uh, decreasing right so the slope is uh, the, the negative that means that uh, oh, this point is located here right the function itself is decreasing and uh, similarly, this is 3 over 4, it's increasing function. So that's how we can use uh, implicit differentiation to solve the problems uh, of taking the derivative. Okay, so that's it for this first half and uh, hope to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.